As part of the use of our plan label tool or our profile label tool, we can use a dimension style to control arrowheads, for example. A dimension and text styles are stored in the text favorites DGN library in the delivered workspace. I want to make sure to set the text style within the dimension style properties. You can go ahead and use the inline leader option if you wish. Remember to set the symbologies to by level. And then lastly, name the dimension style the same name as the annotation cell, and that will trigger automatic selection of the dimension style. And that's optional. If you just need one dimension style and you want the users to pick that singular dimension style each time, that's also supported depending on your particular preferences. So let's take a look at configuring a dimension style. I want to take a quick look at our delivered dimension styles in the workspace. In particular, we'll highlight the plan station and offset that we've been working on. And just to point out a few things that you might want to be interested in filling in, for example, the terminator is supported with the uh, width and height and the fill. Also, in the units, make sure you're setting it to use the uh, active working units. Typically, that's what you would want to do there. And then in our text tab, uh, make sure you go ahead and select uh, an appropriate text style for that particular dimension. And then not everything over here is supported. Uh, for example, text frame is not supported, but I do know that the inline leader, um, if you want to do an extension, you can put that in here. The most important thing I want to talk about, though, is the symbology of the dimension style. This is something uh, new, newly discovered that we want to make sure and set each of these to by level. Uh, there is a little bit of a glitch in this dialog where if you set it to by level it doesn't show the icon uh, correctly until you pick it again. But I want to make sure that you set the color, the styles, and the weights in all of the categories to by level. And then in the advanced tab, expand down your general placement level and that should be set to default. And again, this will go along with the annotation cell that you created to place a label where it will then take on the active symbology of microstation when that label is placed. To go along with the setup of annotations we have to create annotation definitions which are automatically created as we develop our annotation groups. Annotation definitions are stored in the feature definitions DGN library that's required. They use the delivered examples uh, as, a, as a starting point you can export and import uh, between DGN libraries if you wish inside of the Annotation Manager, or you can also right-click, copy, right-click, paste between two different DGN libraries for annotation definitions and annotation groups. If you do choose to copy and paste between them, make sure you copy the annotation definitions first, and then copy the annotation groups second. They are accessed and worked on through Project Explorer, the annotation definitions are referenced into an annotation group and then automatic or automated bulk annotation setup is something that we'll be talking about here as well. Uh, right click to create an annotation group and then on that annotation group you're going to select manage and then that'll take you into the annotation manager. The annotation group manager creates individual annotation definitions that can be shared with other annotation groups. The annotation group manager uses the active drawing scale to control the size of the visualized text. We'll start by copying and pasting an annotation from another DGN lib or create your own new entry. Uh, do not leave the dialog open when switching to a different file. And after completion in the annotation manager dialog, it is required to close the dialog to actually save your changes. That's very important. So let's take a look at a demonstration here on creating annotation definition for a major tick mark along a horizontal baseline. So I'm in a brand new DGN lib here to demonstrate how to create an annotation definition. I have expanded Project Explorer down to the annotation groups. Right click on the linear category and I'm going to select new and I'm going to call this stationing and then I'm going to right click on stationing and select manage. Don't forget your active drawing scale is going to be reflected in this viewer. And so we'll go ahead and expand this down. And in our annotation group we have the option here to add new. And so for example 
Um, because I'm in plan linear, I have an option to add an alignment annotation. And in that alignment annotation, maybe I call this major tick marks, for example. And so then we can come over to our where category. So we will select stations. And in stations, we're going to make sure that we have this interval unlocked or even locked. And so for stations, it's typically even locked. Let's say that we want to do major tick marks every 500 feet. And we'll set that. And because we're placing tick marks, that means that we're going to be placing a line. You can see the options here. We can place lines, cells, or text. We're going to place a line in a situation. And then you would want an element template then to control uh, the symbology of that tick mark. And so that should be in place. And so I'm going to select one here from our example workspace for the station ticks major. And we're not going to be placing a leader uh, on this particular instance. Uh, we are going to be placing a line, and in that line then we would give that a length. We don't need a cell, and in this case we're not placing any text. And so as you begin to then tell it where to place things, uh, you're going to begin to get a visual then in your view here as to what that would look like. Now if you want to make that, that tick mark larger, uh, you just type in the newer value. If you want to uh, offset that, for example, you want to offset half of it, and you'll see that that splits the line. And so that's just an example of how we can create a major tick mark. Just to reiterate, um, in release 10.04.00-48 or later, uh, we do have a recommended best practice to copy and paste these annotation definitions originally delivered in the Civil Workspace and then modified per your standard. Uh, the copy paste uh, the annotation definitions first, then copy and paste the annotation groups second. Now we're going to take a look at a demo of how to create an annotation definition to show profile elevations in a plan view. So let's take a look at how we do that. In this recording, I want to demonstrate how we can annotate horizontal geometry using the active profile. For example, in this case, we have the edge of pavement shown with a radius value shown for the main line and for a side road, just a portion or a quadrant of the intersection. And I have an active profile on there that has a parabolic reverse curve. And I would like to label the elevations at a 15 foot spacing on this particular edge of pavement. To get started, the first thing we would need is a text favorite to use to calculate that elevation. And so I have generated one here using these properties, the open roads plan annotation fields. And I went under the category for point and then the point Z property. And I selected my preferences over here under the units format and saved that text favorite then as something called profile elevation. Once that text favorite is established, then you would come over and generate an annotation group under your plan category. And I have made one here under my linear annotation types. And so if I manage that annotation, what I've done is set this to increments at a 15 foot spacing. And there's more options than that you can do you know, fixed distance or percentage along the element. Um, but in our example, I'm just going to use increments every 15 feet. And so with that set, then I tell it that I want to annotate text. And then you can also give it an element template to set the symbology. I put in a leader uh, just to show that you can. You don't have to do that. And then for placement, I just locked in an angle value of 45 degrees and gave it some a little bit of an offset. And then down here, I went ahead and selected my text favorite that we created that profile elevation. And then if you want to set it to view independent, you can. Or if you want it to go ahead and rotate when you rotate view, you can set that to false. So within this information uh, set up in the annotation manager, then we can go into our feature symbology. And so we will expand that and go down to our linear and then pavement and our road edge of pavement. We'll go to properties here. And in the properties, all I have to do then is to the plan annotation group for the edge of pavement, I'm going to assign this annotation group that I created called profile elevations. And so that's done. 
an in. It's just a matter simply of coming to your drawing production and element annotation, annotate element, and then we would select our complex element and then reset then to generate our elevations of our profile based along our edge of pavement in our plan do, 2D plan view. So we've been talking about copying and pasting annotation groups and annotation definitions between the examples workspace and what you might be developing. How do we actually do that? So let's take a look. In our delivered workspace, we have annotation definitions and annotation groups stored in this file. And let's say, for example, we would like to go ahead and copy and paste some of those annotation definitions over to our own customized file. So what we're going to do is make a, a new file and in this folder I'm going to put in my features annotations levels and element templates imperial.dgnlib so we're going to save that and open in once in let's go ahead and open up Explorer and then under the standards whether it's open rail or open roads it doesn't matter and under standards I want to expand libraries and with the libraries expanded, I want to expand down then first to annotation definitions. It's important that you do the definitions first. And then into our master file where those annotations exist. And then we're going to do an example here where we're going to set up the north arrow annotation particular definition and group uh, to use for our sheet seating. And so I'm going to take this north arrow annotation definition from my plan drawing category and I'm going to select right click copy and then in my active file I'm going to go down to my annotation definitions to the exact same folder and I'm going to right click paste and so now all of the settings for the north arrow annotation definition are in place now we want to repeat the process for our annotation groups and so we'll come down again to our master file delivered with the workspace navigate down to plan drawing and this is a more generic name to call the north arrow I kept the name generic so that you know eventually we can support things like match lines and so I'm going to copy this annotation group called plan annotation go down here to my annotation groups and in my drawing folder right click paste and so now we have that entry set up for us where we can customize it using our cell name for our particular north arrow and also the element template for symbology, etc. Now let's explore the annotation manager. It's context sensitive options based on the category. It relies on text favorites to compute text such as station labels. It's a replacement for the En-ROADS XIN and the Geopack DDB files regarding annotation from our Select Series 4 products. It uses the active drawing scale for temporary visualization of graphics. There are infinite possibilities to accommodate most standards and new to 2018 Q3 is the plan annotation for north arrows and also profile elevations along 2D plan view geometry. The where property determines the position of the labels, differs depending on the type of label. In this example, alignment annotation may have increments or stations or horizontal points, vertical points or in horizontal components. The where property determines which features to label for cross-section points and segment annotation. Can label all points or utilize a specific point or segment name list. And allows for very specific filtering for the ultimate control. The where property is not used for setting up grid annotations. The annotate property sets the type of label, for example text or cell or line and the template option allows the selection of an element template to control the symbology of the annotation. The leader property enables an optional leader line with multiple options for terminators such as an arrow, a circle, a square, or a triangle. The template option allows the selection of an element template to control the symbology of the leader. The placement property sets the location of the label relative to where the property and it includes rotation options, vertical offset options, horizontal offset options, perpendicular offset options, and tangential offset options. Note, differing offer options will appear depending on the type of label that you're creating. The line property sets the length of the line when the line option is selected to be drawn. The cell property sets the cell name, scale, and application 
of the active cell scale, activated when the type of label is set to cell. For grids, there are two distinct types. There is the profile grid shown here, and also there is a cross-section grid. And then lastly, there is a plan view grid as well. The profile grid sets the following, the border, the major grid properties, the minor grid properties, the major and minor grid line properties, the horizontal and vertical axis titles, horizontal and vertical tick labels. The excess grid sets the following, the border, the major and minor grid properties, the major and minor grid line properties, the horizontal and vertical axis titles, and the horizontal and vertical tick labels. Frame annotation for subsurface utilities is new for 2018 Q3 release. Allows for right-of-way annotation setup with collision intelligence. You can also define in the feature uh, symbologies the annotation group properties for linear feature symbologies, point, profile, and also surface feature symbologies. So that's where you'll set up or link to your annotation groups. Typically, uh, you're going to be using profiles and cross sections. Uh, you're going to be setting up your annotations for these. And also now we do support plan view, for example, showing a grid or a north arrow. And so when you're setting up your sheet seed definitions, you would want to go ahead and select your annotation group for the users. That concludes our training on our setup for our annotation. And so just to know that we do have a workspace setup learning path out there on the learn if you would wish to take a look at that when you have time. Thank you and I appreciate your time and hopefully you found this to be helpful. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.